Do I love money and things too much? See, there would be uh, opportunities and decisions that would come up for me that I would hinder myself in because I really wanted that thing. Because I thought that thing would replace something that I was feeling empty inside. So wherever I was feeling empty, I thought, you know what, that car will replace what I'm feeling. You know what, that house, that vacation even, that'll replace what I'm feeling inside. And by the way, this top that I'm wearing, you can't see what it says, but it says, I can tell your bag is fake. Doesn't this picture, look at my smile, doesn't this picture say a thousand words? Isn't this the society that we live in today? You don't have to be that person. I'm telling you right now, you don't have to be that person. There's nothing wrong with wanting nice things. I am not saying that. I'll be the first to tell you that I love a nice bag. I love nice shoes. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you worship those things over your calling, that's a huge problem. Am I scared of money? Does it freak me out? I would get physically ill when I would check the credit card statements. Physically ill. Clammy hands, stomach here. And some of you, whenever you make a big leap in faith, those same things happen. And that's God telling you, hey, we need to work on this. So when my mom um, first started getting sick, when I was little, I mean mentally sick before she got physically sick, um, which I guess is physical, but we had a very comfortable life. We had a nice house. She was a computer consultant for a big company back when computers were like this big, right? <laughs> and, um, and so one day I remember her just crying on the phone over the bill collectors calling over and over and over again. And then we lost our house, went into foreclosure. I remember the police showing up at our house and I knew something wasn't right. And uh, my dad had come over and they were never together. So that's a whole nother story for a whole nother time. But my dad came over and I said, Daddy, why are the police at our house? And he said, well, um, they were just checking to make sure everything was okay. They thought someone broke in. And I, you know, kids know. They just know. And uh, in the next few weeks, all of our stuff went to auction. We had to get out. And so I went into this whole mentality of, if you have something, it can be taken away from you like that. And so I was so scared. Even the more money that we made, the more that fear would come up that I was scared it would, it would just vanish. It would go away because that's what happened to my mom. That's what happened to me. So if you're scared of money, and this is a big one for people, and uh, Pastor Baker will tell you that it's the spirit of mammon hanging over you. And um, it's so true. You have to make money work for you, not the other way around. And we know that. We know that. But sometimes these things you have to address head on. And it's the scariest, biggest walk in faith that we'll ever do. Do I really care about people? We're born to be selfish, right? Like, just look at my kids. Mine. 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 I'm like, no, we share. Well, but I had it first and always. And I always had it first. Even if I didn't have it first, I had it first right? Do I really care about others? Ask God to work on your heart. Because I'll tell you, I had a money mindset series, uh, wealth series, where I interviewed uh, over 20 billionaires and millionaires in all different industries. And can I tell you the one common theme? They wanted to serve. I know that doesn't shock you, but we all say we care about others. And, and the only reason I can share this is because I was this girl, right? I've been through it. I've been asking God to work on my heart. I cared about people directly around me, but caring about someone across the world to me, that was hard for me. And it's okay to be honest in these circumstances. You may be born with the biggest heart who was just born to serve others. Or you may need to work on that. And it's okay, but you have to be honest with yourself and ask God to work on your heart. The ultimate question is, am I a good steward with the gifts that God has given me? And if you're not, and we all have work to do, myself included, but if you're not, whose permission are you waiting for? Your spouse, your kids, your parents, 
your friends, your family, your mentors, your colleagues. And this whole lineup was my entire life, my entire life, until I realized that the only person that I was waiting for permission for was myself, to give myself permission to step into that greatness, to give myself permission to be someone who I thought I hadn't been my entire life. You have to have a hard conversation with you and get to the core of why you're not doing it. And 99% of the time, it's that you have not given yourself permission to make that leap. If you really examine your thoughts and you really examine your actions, you are the one that hasn't given you permission. So make the pledge today. Everyone stand up and repeat after me. I will give myself permission to follow my God-given purpose, to be seen, to be great, and to be an inspiration for my generation. Because a snake that you cannot see does not bite, and awareness is all about restoring your freedom to choose what you want instead of what your past imposes on you. <laughs>